Bank of Clark County has a comprehensive suite of solutions for your personal and business needs. We offer banking, lending services, and wealth management services with the best-in-class customer service you'd expect from a community bank. Whether you need a checking or savings account, a mortgage or home equity line of credit, a business loan, or to set up a trust or investment account, Bank of Clark County can help. Bank of Clark County. Big Bank Solutions, Community Bank Service. And we've just opened a branch at 530 Blackwell Road in Warrenton. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You too could have the chance to win life changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. Welcome to the Unscripted Podcast. My name is Corby LaCroix and the song you're hearing right now is called Great and Mighty One. Available on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your music. But for now, recording from the unscripted studio at the junction in Old Hilliard, here's your host and my friend, Aaron Conrad. Great Redeemer, God of grace. All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted from my basement in Old Hilliard. Thank you, Corby, for my introduction on the audio. Uh, my guest today, uh, this is really cool. I'm, I'm excited, as always, uh, but I'm, I'm really excited today because my guest today is Joel Penton. He's a graduate of The Ohio State University and played five years of football for the Buckeyes. He's a member of three Big Ten championship teams, a member of the national championship team as well. What year was that, Joel? It was 02. 02. Okay. 2002 championship team and a four-time academic all Big Ten selection. Uh, in his senior year, Joel received a prestigious, and you may have to help me with this, Werfel Trophy. Did I say it right? Danny Werfel, yeah. Danny Werfel. Okay. But it's also known as the Humanitarian Heisman, which I think is the cool part. That's Humanitarian Heisman. That trophy is a national award that recognizes one, one college football player in the entire country who best combines exemplary community service and athletic and academic achievement. And after graduating from OSU, Joel turned down an opportunity to play in the NFL to begin a career in full-time speaking. Since that time, Joel has quickly earned a reputation as one of the nation's leading youth motivational speakers. As one of the top school motivational speakers, Joel has shared his school assembly programs with nearly 1 million students nationwide. He specializes in high school assemblies and middle school assemblies as well. Um, that's a lot. I, I'm terrible at reading, so let's just jump into Unscripted. <laughs> welcome to Unscripted. But So let's start at the very beginning. Joe, well, first of all, welcome to Unscripted, Joel. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Is there anything I missed in the bio? Because I know you got family. You want to talk about your family for a minute because I know they're close to your heart. Oh, well, I have my family on my wall up there. You can see it's kind of far away. But uh, yeah, I've got five children, ages 12 down to four. Beautiful wife, Bethany. She and I met at Ohio State. My kids are uh, uh, four boys and a girl. The girl is the fourth out of five. She's the cutest child in the world. And, uh, and over there is that Werfel Trophy you mentioned, which is in the corner. But, uh, uh, yeah, anything else? Well, I mean, I know you, and I even directed you there, some of that you read was from my speaking website. Right. Um, but my main personal focus now is what I know we'll talk about a lot, and that's LifeWise Academy. Um, I'm doing much less speaking now and focusing uh, my energies on, on LifeWise. But so, and I know we'll talk about that. Right. So teaser, you got to wait till the end because I have a feeling we're going to get to LifeWise here soon. But I want to start at the beginning because um, so you and I first met, I don't gosh, Joel, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I don't know. It's been a while. I think more. Yeah, I think I think when I moved to Hilliard, like 15 years ago. It's been a minute <laughs> since we met. But the first thing that I was just so impressed by um, was, and you're going to have to help me. I was so impressed. I can't remember the name of it. But you'll have to help me. What was the, the, the was it fifth? What was the name of the thing at the shot that you put together? Yeah, so it was at St. John Arena, St. the John old Arena. basketball arena on campus. And my senior year at Ohio State, we right. did what's called the main event. Main event. And 
and it was really just an outreach, um, middle of the season, uh, some, an athletes in action staff member and I, and some other student volunteers, we said, Hey, you know, this Ohio state platform thing is really big. We always do these campus area outreaches for students. Why don't we open it up, do something larger for the larger community? Let's rent the largest building that we could possibly afford as a student group. That being St. John arena holds 13,000 people and just invite everybody. Well, it just so happened that we were having a great season. We were undefeated, ranked number one in the country. We were able to kind of almost hold a press conference of sorts to say, hey, we're doing this event. You can come hear some football players talk about life, talk about on the field, but also off the field, talk about faith. And we had a capacity crowd. We had 13,000 people, people busting in from all over Ohio even to right. come hear some football players uh, talk about their faith. Amazing. And that's where I think our first connecting point was. You all made a DVD. Who were some of the other guys that were involved in that? Just to top because I don't remember off the top of my head. Who were some of the other guys? Yeah, so we did a couple of them in 06. That was my senior year. And speaking with me, a guy you had on recently, Roy Hall was a part of that. Yes, sir. David Patterson, who played D line with me, uh, Stan White, who was a fullback, then other guys. James Laurinaitis, Marcus Freeman, who at the time were underclassmen. We then did it again two years later in 08. And then some of those same guys were featured, uh, James and Marcus, and they took, uh, whereas my senior year, they kind of just did it. We had a few guys who spoke, you know, Mike in hand alone on stage speaking, telling their stories. And they, we were all seniors and then some of the underclassmen were just kind of interview format. And then a couple years later, those same guys were then had uh, more robust speeches. Unbelievable. And it was awesome. It was just such a, a huge impact. I was so impressed by that. As many people know that, listen, I'm, I'm not an Ohio State guy. I'm a, I'm a North Carolina guy. And that's not just a basketball fan. Like I'm, I'm all in. So I, I follow football, uh, all those things. And so Ohio State to me, is, you know, it's it's awesome. It's we live here. I don't follow it. I don't follow the recruiting and, you know, got no guys names and things like that. But that was something that was so impressive to me was to see a group of young guys recognize their platform, and especially in a city like Columbus, Ohio, where the Ohio State University is our major league team. And all, their, all respect to the Clippers and the crew and, and the Blue Jackets and everybody else. At the end of the day, this is an Ohio State city. And so to recognize that platform, take full advantage of it for Christ was unbelievable to me. And then all the follow-up, it was all excellence. And so I really want to talk about that again teaser at the end, uh, something that you talked, you and I talked about a few weeks ago. Um, and, and so we'll get to that, but awesome. Just awesome. So let's, let's start with your story because I think you have a powerful story at Ohio state and then on and on. And I think it will lead us into where we really want to go at the end. And that's with life, uh, LifeWise Academy. So let's start with your story, just as you told it to me just a few weeks ago with a group of guys, because it's really powerful. And I think it's important and impactful for this audience to hear that same story. Sure. Yeah. Well, my story is it's, I'm glad to hear you say it's powerful and impactful. In some ways it's pretty basic. Um, in that I'm from small town, Northwest Ohio. It seemed like typical childhood, school, sports, uh, church was a part of my childhood as it seemed like most of my friends had some sort of church connection. But for me, it, the whole church side of things was just a cultural thing. It was like, that's what everybody did. It's religion. You know, I guess I believed in God. I don't know. Um, and, but I was, to, to be honest, if I were mowing the grass or something and thought about God or had, you know, thoughts, I would get nervous or uncomfortable or scared of death or things like that. Um, it wasn't until I was a freshman in high school that I really heard or came to understand what is the gospel. You know, I, I remember learning a lot before about God or about being a good person, those types of things. Uh, but then as a freshman in high school is when a youth pastor really explained that, uh, you know, who Jesus is, that he, he came and died for our sin and that without him, we have no hope, but we can be forgiven if we'll trust him and turn to him and 
uh, you know, repent and have faith. And, and, and it's, you know, the, the most basic Christian message for whatever reason, I, I don't know whether I hadn't heard it or whether I had just been blind to it my entire life. And when right. I finally, it just, when I heard it and I understood, I believed and I trusted Christ and my life was changed. I mean, all those things I would later read in the Bible about being born again, about becoming a new creation. I mean, that was all real to me. It was just like, it happened. I was, I was new, I was changed. And so everything about me changed, including my desires, you know, um, I realized looking back that I had this major desire for sports um, and I've been working really hard. Well, then I realized that, you know, I'm doing that for a purpose. And so this platform that had been growing as a successful athlete, I was given that for a purpose. It wasn't just to have fun or, you know, it was because I'm here to share the gospel with others. And so I, I started taking every opportunity I could I actually started preaching in churches at when I was in high school <laughs> because I was just this outspoken Christian guy with this life change. And so I started filling in for my pastor, for other pastors when they would go out of town. And then the platform that Ohio State gave me, it just opened up more and more doors for me to share my testimony and speak. And I never considered myself to be some sort of gifted speaker. Um, I, I probably do a, a competent job, but I, for, for me, it was just a matter of math. You know, it was like, why just speak to one person if I can speak to a room of people and share the gospel with right. more? And so that's really what led me to, you know, even what we were talking about with the main event to, to help organize that again. Why not share the gospel with a bunch of people if they'll come? And then even getting into speaking after college. My wife and I actually thought about uh, being missionaries, like, of going to another country, but it just wow. didn't seem to make sense to to really forsake this platform that had been given to me as a football mm -hmm. player. And like you said, Ohio state's the, the sport, you know, the sports thing here in Ohio, Ohio mm -hmm. state football. Right. Um, and so it, it just made sense to continue down that path. And, and, and so you did, and, and you, and, and let's, let's cover real quick. You're from Van Wert, Ohio, correct? Yeah, yeah. Small Wert. small town called Van Wert because that's going to be important in a minute, right? We're gonna we're gonna talk about Van Wert here in a second. But um, so out of college, and I I've heard you speak in a church, and you were awesome. You, you were awesome, and, and like you could tell that 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 had been groomed inside of you. Um, you didn't just jump up there and you know as an athlete and give a quick speech. Um, that that was something that you had had clearly done before, and it was really really good. Um, I've heard you speak a few times, um, never in a high school setting, but I can imagine it played so well in a high school setting uh, to hear someone that played at the Ohio State University come in. So you again, you've grasped a platform, and I think a lot of us in our life we have that opportunity, and a platform is presented. I'm not sure 100 percent of us always grab the platform we're given. Because so many people, I think we just we just exist. We do our thing. We go to work. We get our paycheck. Whatever. But God, God prevents God presents us with um, platforms, and it's up to us to grab them or not. And when we do, I think we see the kind of things that you have gotten involved in. So let's move to that. Um, there's three different things. Um, so let's start with the first one, and that is uh, Stand for Truth. Is that, am I saying that right? Stand for Truth. Stand for yep. Truth. Let's talk about Stand for Truth, and then what that what that kind of evolved to, and then we'll ultimately get to uh, LifeWise. Which again, teaser. Hang on, don't 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 click off the podcast yet because we're getting there, and I don't want you all to miss uh, LifeWise. So let's start with Stand for Truth. Where did that all go? And 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 that was you know you driving around. Anyway, I don't want to take it. It's your story. You you all tell right. the story. Well, I'm, I'll take a really a half step back to say that it's taken me years to really understand the, what God had already kind of baked into me that has led me to be a part of the things I'm a part of. <clears throat> but now looking back, you're really, oh, like, oh, this makes sense. And so part of my, obviously, the athlete side of things gave that platform. But a couple um, things family oriented that it took me a while to realize is that I come from a very math oriented family. <laughs> So you're going to be like, what are we talking about? Well, you'll understand. A, a very <laughs> math, 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 by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. My, uh, my mother's a math teacher. I had a sister that went to the Naval Academy and a sister that went to Case Western and had an academic scholarship for mathematics and all that. And so math comes easy to me. That's how my brain thinks. 
And I have on my in my mother a very entrepreneurial uh, side of things. And my, my mother was always starting businesses and making money, just running them out of the house while she was also kind of a stay-at-home mom. And I didn't really realize how much of that was baked into me. And then I come to Christ and I want people to hear the gospel. And I start really going about this in a very entrepreneurial and almost mathematically minded way of just the way God has wired me and using this platform. And so what, the, what resulted, we started this ministry, Stand for Truth, is that, again, thinking entrepreneurially, thinking uh, strategically, though I wouldn't have used those words at the time, that's just <clears throat> how I was thinking, was that when I first graduated from college, and I went into full-time speaking, again, there's math that I just wanted to share the gospel with as many people as I could. So that was getting people in the room. Um, I found myself speaking in a lot of churches and a lot of Christian events. And right away, within a few months, I thought, I don't want to be doing this because if these Christian events are having someone in to speak and they don't bring in me, they'll bring in a different Christian who will probably do a perfectly fine job, maybe even a better job, you know? And so how can, how can I get in front of people who aren't Christians? Those are the people I want to share the gospel with. And so I had started getting some invitations to speak in schools. And so I thought, well, there's a bunch of people who, don't know Christ. And that's at, in high schools when I came to faith. And so I can really freshly remember that I can kind of speak to that group. Um, but can't, can't share the gospel during these school assemblies. That's against the rules. And so let's develop a strategy that would be completely above board and that would enable us to capitalize on this opportunity. And so a friend of mine Join me. We kind of started this ministry, Stand for Truth, that exists to reach unchurched students in public schools with the gospel. And so we basically market a school assembly to schools all across the country and say, hey, you're looking for school assemblies. Schools bring in these assemblies all the time on character, on right. bullying and drugs and alcohol. Say, hey, you can pay us to come in and do the school assembly. And so we'll contract with the school. And then we just ask. <laughs> After we sign the contract, set the date, we say, hey, can we use your building in the evening for our own event. Right. Uh, it'll be, it's going to be faith-based, but students don't have to come. You don't need to promote it. You don't need to sponsor it. In fact, we will pay a rental fee if we need to. And, but we'll have our own event. We'll partner with your local fellowship of Christian athletes, local churches, and then we'll be able students can come back and they can hear the gospel. And so we started this back in 2007 at first thinking, we'll just do it for a brief period of time while this Ohio state platform, you know, until it kind of dwindles uh, the demand dwindles, but to our surprise, as we refine the model and refine the model, more and more doors started opening a few years in, we had more demand for our, we were turning away more opportunities than we could even take. And so we were able to start uh, start replicating, start bringing on other speakers, other musicians. And so, yeah, now our ministry as a whole, Stand for Truth, we've been in over 2,000 schools, um, well over a million students wow. have heard our presentations. We have groups in Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, uh, traveling the nation. And I think all that's important in a second because we're going to talk about it. But um, I think leading up to that, again, all these things are, are th th these were stacks, th these were blocks that stacked on top of each other, because what you learn in that process is the reality is that navigating the school um, platform, I guess, is, I, I can't think of a word for it, navigating the school systems, um, and we want to get into a, you know, whole political thing, but, but the reality is you can't just walk into a school and present the gospel. There are, there are challenges. There are um, things that are in place that prevent that. And what, whatever you're feeling on that is, anyone listening to this, whatever they're feeling on that is, they are there. And there are, are, are avenues that you can and cannot. And I think you mentioned this. I want to I make sure we, people heard that because I think it was really impactful the day that, that I met with you just a few weeks ago. Um, you all could could you could hold a um, um, a student assembly, and you could speak to the students, but you couldn't speak to the students about faith. In, in, right. in less, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, but but you couldn't speak to the students about faith, but you could hold an event that night and invite them back off school hours, 
and as you said, use the facility, have have a band, have those kind of things, have a big kind of celebration later that night where you could speak on faith. So, so you all learn to navigate the waters of what it is to work with a school to get in front of students that may or may not have ever heard the gospel message. And did I just say all that okay? Yeah, you said it correctly. And navigating it, not just to pull it off, but also navigating it to really do a, a, an excellent job everywhere along the way. Because you you want to, schools, they're looking for somebody to come in to speak about, let, for example, bullying. Right. And so we want to be able to provide them with the highest quality school assembly that they could find. You know, that's the goal to meet their goals to, to teach your kids about bullying and also not break any rules and take advantage of the opportunity uh, while you're in town and have the platform to share the gospel and to do it in such a way that, again, abides by all the rules and doesn't burn any bridges, meaning right. burning any bridges with the school administration, burning any bridges with the students, making sure everybody knows what's happening. Um, so, yeah, that whole dance of doing things the right way, doing a good job, and being faithful to the gospel to take advantage of that opportunity is really what we we had to nail and we learned over the course of that decade, which as what we will talk about has become very relevant <laughs> for right. this next kind of phase of our ministry. Right. And there's one, so I want to I want to take one quick step and make a bridge to that in a minute. But there's one other thing that you you designed and 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 launched before LifeWise. And, and do you want to talk about that real quick? I believe it was a speakers network with, with you want to talk about that real quick and, and we will absolutely come back. I want to, so let's, let's take just a quick off ramp. We're going to stop off at a rest area. Let's talk about the other one. Cause it's just as important. And then we're going to get back on the freeway. Cause we do want to talk about life wise and please people remember anyone listening to this, remember what we just said. There was a lot of challenges for Joel to come into a school to do what he did with Stand for Truth. Off ramp. Yeah, well, go ahead and talk for that because I do want to make sure we highlight the other one, but we'll get back on the freeway in a second. But let's talk about the other one for a second. Well, the other so relevant speakers network is the speakers bureau that we developed. And it really is it's fleshing out kind of what I was just talking about. Right. In that uh, as my own personal, you know, bring in Joel to come speak as I kind of hit my ceiling in, in terms of I can only be in one place at one time. And that we realize just this opportunity that schools want and need high quality speakers to come into their school to address their students. It's not a silver bullet that solves all your problems in the school, but it's a part of the mix of what you want to be doing to have a healthy healthy school atmosphere. And so, and, and we recognize that a lot of speakers honestly don't do a good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we developed a speakers network, a speakers bureau of other speakers that we know and trust. And some of them are full-time stand for truth speakers, musicians that will follow the same kind of gospel centered strategy, uh, but not all of them. And so we bo- are able to book all of our school assemblies through this speakers network and we have now booking agents and we have a whole system and process and that kind of is just part of that model of being able to go in during the school day give the schools what they're looking for uh, and then also create that opportunity for the gospel perfect and i didn't want to gloss over it because there are there are there, these are all stackable and the, the 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 base was one and now we just talked about the other and now let's get back on the freeway and really talk about where you're at today and that's with lifewise so can you um from there i'll just give it right back to you let's talk lifewise because it's really really amazing but i think we needed the groundwork and the base for everybody to understand what brought you to that so let's talk lifewise now yeah and so what we just talked about in many ways is it's related, but not in a direct way. I think you'll see how it lends itself um, to right. this new strategy, newest strategy of ours, LifeWise Academy. Uh, a few years ago, I heard a term that I had never heard before, and that is released time religious instruction, which maybe I hadn't heard it because it's such a mouthful and hard to say. <laughs> released time religious instruction. So Aaron, had you ever heard about it before? I no, not until it. what three weeks ago when we when, when I sat down with with your team. I, I'd never heard of it ever. 
Yeah. And I hadn't. And here's what really, and to many of your listeners, they're going to think this isn't real. Uh, the sky, Joel, just made this up. And you're just going to have to Google it because it's totally, totally real. Right. Um, the 1952, the Supreme Court ruled, so nearly 70 years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, students in public schools can be released from public school during the school day to receive religious instruction, provided the program is off school property, privately funded, and they have parental permission. Now, the operative phrase there, the real key thing is during the school day. Right. Because most people think, you know, there's before school programs, Bible studies and things. There's after school programs, even like the things we were talking about when we have our concerts and things as our after school. Um, but there's actually the Supreme Court ruling that students can be, re be released during the day, during yeah. their school day, again, off property um, to receive religious instruction. And not only was the, did the Supreme Court rule on it in 1952, but now more than half of the states in the nation have laws on the books about release time. The state of Ohio has uh, a law that actually says high school students can get school credit for release time classes. That means local churches, local Christians are teaching the Bible and the high school can recognize that and award school credit for this. And it's not a comparative state funded religions course. This is again, local Christians. And so this, Little known, almost no one is aware of this. I wasn't aware of that. I was running a ministry specifically to reach unchurched students in public schools with the gospel. And I did not know about this thing that had been around for decades until people in my hometown of Van Wert, Ohio, as you were uh, good to remember, um, Van Wert, Ohio, they learned of this. Apart from me, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. They learned this was possible. They started a program bought a house next to the elementary school in town, renovated it to classrooms, started holding classes. About a third of the people in town attend church regularly. And so they thought, well, you know, maybe that's, those are the kids that will come. Maybe we'll get 30% of the students. <laughs> and to their surprise, year one, 60% of the students signed up. And by year three, 95% of the public elementary school students were enrolled in the program. Their parents signed them up for the program to be taught the Bible once a week. These kids rotate through two classrooms at a time, three and a half days a week. Over 700 students are now in the program uh, at Van Wert. And it was, so that was back in 2012. And then in 2018, they reached out to me. Again, I'm in the dark on this. I'm just, I'm the hometown guy living in Columbus Joel, let me, let me interrupt you really quick, because I think a lot of people yep. listen to the podcast while they're driving, working out. That's that's my understanding of who listens or walking or running or whatever they're doing right now. Please. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You, too, could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice of the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. Say that again, because I don't want us to miss what you just said. In, in a town, Van Wert, can you run yeah. through that one more time? And I apologize to anybody that's like, oh, dude, I don't want to hear that again. But please. Can you run through that again? Because it's impactful. It's so impactful before we move to the next thing. It's so impactful. Those numbers you just said, and I, I can't repeat them because I don't want to get them wrong. Please say those again about Van Wert. What, what they discovered yeah. in Van Wert. Van Wert 2012 started a release time program. Year one, 60% of their public elementary school students, that's grades one through five. Year one, 60% enrolled in the course. And by year three, 95% of the students, nearly 700 students, grades one through five, were enrolled, while the vast majority of which don't attend church. And so they're not taught the Bible in any other context. They're a part of this program being taught the Bible on a weekly basis. Thank you. And, and you said one third of the city is does not attend church or does attend church? I'm sorry. About a third, based on an informal survey of the students, right. about a third attend church, uh, whereas 95% are in the program. 
Unbelievable. Okay, I'm sorry for I'm sorry for that interruption, but but please please uh, continue. No, no, no. It's you're so fine. Powerful. So it's so powerful. So 2018 rolls around, and basically, long story short, the people in Van Wert reach out to me, and they say basically, Joel, you're the hometown guy. Um, you're living in Columbus. You started a ministry. You're growing a ministry. It seems to be going well. Maybe you can help us with a riddle that we're trying to solve. <laughs> and that's this. They say, let me, let us show you our program. Of course, as soon as I see what's happening, I'm like, holy cow, what, wait, what's happening? Right. You know, 95% of students, it makes me embarrassed to even find like, how did I not even know this was happening? Right. Right. And they say, they say, help us solve this riddle. It's legal. It's clearly impactful. So why on earth isn't there a program like this in every single community across the entire country. Right. And, and honestly, it was a really good question. <laughs> Great question, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a really good question. So that got me, you know, so that's when I stopped sleeping. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> right. Solve that riddle. And so I went searching. I thought, well, you know what? I don't know, but you know who might be able to help us figure this out is I bet there's somebody out there doing this there's got to be somebody that's figured this thing out, right? That's they, they built a model. Um, it's scalable. It's replicable. It's excellent. It's gospel centered. Like I, we're not the first people that ask this question, surely. So let me go find, let me find that. Let me jump on Google. Let me get on the phone. Let me find the people doing it. And that's, and what we came to find out is what we think is the answer to the question. And that is that that organization doesn't exist you know, or it didn't exist. Not anymore, um, but now, now it does. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the idea is that um, you have progress. So like in the state of Ohio, again, this has been around for decades, but you have about, you have over 600 school districts, maybe two or three dozen have release time programs. Um, but each and every one of them, and many of them are, are, are great, um, but what they have in common is that they're, they're local, kind of homegrown, mom and pop, local flavor, which, again, can be really great in many ways. But it's not it's not scalable. It's not something that necessarily is repeatable. And we said, where's the yeah, where's the you know, you got ministries like the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. You got ministries right. like Youth for Christ, Young Life. You know, those are so broad. So many people are impacted because they have a plug and play turnkey repeatable model. Where's that organization? And it doesn't exist. And so that's that's what we found to be the there's a bunch of answers. probably, But the primary answer we think it hasn't spread is for lack of that type of model. And so two or three years ago in 2018, the group in Van Wert and our ministry, Sanford Truth, decided to link arms to create something new, that being LifeWise Academy, which is meant to be that plug and play turnkey release time model that anybody in any community could start today because we provide the tools, resources, knowledge, training, systems, processes, everything A to Z so that people don't have to reinvent the wheel and they can start a program. So that last, uh, you know, in 2018, that was the idea. And so far it's, it's turned out to be pretty exciting. It's amazing. So just so everybody understands, just to, to kind of give, give some flavor, Joel and I, as, as we said earlier, we go, we go back a little ways. It's not like we hang out on the, on a, on a daily basis. Uh, Joel reached out to me, invited me to a breakfast um, a few weeks ago. I, I honestly, I just thought we were going to hang out and, and talk about Stanford truth. I didn't even know about this yet. I walked in and from the moment I walked in till the minute I had to leave, um, I was blown away by what one thing that I'm sure we're going to talk about in a minute is the excellence of from the facility to the presentation to the uh, character of the people that I met that were a part of your team um, across the board. And I, I, I want to almost say that this has something to do with your your. Again, I don't want to go back to Iowa State, but you know, I, I know Jim Trussell was your coach, and I'm a huge Jim Trussell fan. But you you learned excellence, and and that's you know, Ohio State is clearly they're doing something right because they're always you know where they are in the polls and what they are with their success. That doesn't just happen. There's excellence that takes place, and that was my thought when I was there that day too. So you've learned that, and I was absolutely blown away 
by all of those elements, but also the fact that this is available to all of us. And the other thing, you you guys shared the last statistics that day. I'm not sure if you're allowed to share them now or if you can't just say pass. But um, you started with a goal and you guys blew that goal away. I guess I can say that that much. And you might be able to give more more color to those outside, you know, inside those lines. But you started with a goal and that that goal has absolutely been, I think, blown away. And now you, you so much so that you said, all right, let's get really crazy and set that goal even higher for all the schools, because I think we have an opportunity here. And again, I'm I guess I'm I'm, I'm painting with really broad strokes. But can you can you add anything to that from what you all shared with me that day about what what has happened just in this, the, the short time you all have been been doing this? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate uh, those kind of words about your experience here. That's I mean, awesome. to, to echo that, and and we do talk about it explicitly as the excellence factor. I, and I often talk about Ohio State mm-hmm. um, and that, um, you know, Ohio State is not content to be middle of the pack, right? right? I mean, Ohio right. State is, is shooting at excellence and We want to do that not because of some sort of strange competitive, we want to be the best look at us, but because we represent the king of the universe. We're ambassadors of the king of the universe. And we know that if a ministry, and this is where what we had to learn in over the last decade and, you know, and more is that if we're going to interact with the public school and in the marketplace of ideas and all that, um, then we we need to do things with excellence. You know, we need to, um, just like we said about the school assemblies, um, that you know, we want to we, we want to provide the best school assemblies that a school can have. Right. Now with this program of LifeWise Academy, schools are inundated all day long with all these different opportunities and programs and this and that. Well, we want to we want to we want to be excellent. So I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown of just the last few years. Since 2018 is when we had the idea. (laughs) And so we kind of put together, you know, our just general idea of how is this going to look? You know, we're going to be gospel centered. We're going to have a character focus because we know that schools want and need character education. And that's, again, where our kind of our background with the school assemblies really was helpful. Character education and mental health. We want to be local church driven, not, we don't want to like, we're coming in to do something in a community. No, we want to provide communities with the tools. We want to provide churches with the tools. We want to be plug and play. So again, provide all the tools. We have a nationwide vision and the sixth thing is excellence. And so in 2018, we kind of mapped out that general idea, um, got some of our systems in place, raised some money, made some hires, and then realized, okay, now we're going to do this thing. We want to launch a couple pilot locations in 2019 and just see if, you know, see if we're crazy or if this thing's going to work. And it went really, really well. So we did two kind of rural communities um, because we knew that was kind of low hanging fruit. So we did one that hit a 60% participation rate with a, a custom modular classroom that we built. We did another in a church that's across the street from the school, kind of on opposite sides of the state. Um, and they went really well. And, and then word spread. So we thought, well, let's do a few more. And we kind of set the goal let's try to see 25 programs launched by 2025. We thought that's ambitious, you know, that's a lot of programs. (laughs) So 25 by 25, that was like our slogan. Well, then we hit a roadblock in 2020, right? Because the entire world shut down with the pandemic, schools were shutting down. However, there was enough excitement that we were still able to launch in uh, two additional school districts, three additional schools, uh, and so in 2020, those went, and I think they both hit over a 70% participation rate it's crazy. in year one. And so then as we sit, again, that was 2020, we just finished the school year. Um, we are active in five school districts, uh, five schools across five school districts. And again, we, we were thinking about that 25 by 25. However, word is spreading very rapidly. Excitement is very high. And we currently have 20 school districts slated to launch this fall. And so that 25 by 25 number is, I mean, that's, that thing's gone. Right. It's out of the window. I mean, we're going to be at 25, 25 school districts in terms of schools. We might hit 30 here in 2021. And so, yeah, we are, as we're, I won't won't get into the specifics, but as we're mapping out our, 
five year plan. And now we're starting to get, I mean, just in the last few days, um, I, we, we have things coming in from Iowa, from Texas, from Virginia, from um, all over of people. Who, again, it feels like the time is right. Right. The laws are there. Anybody, any Christian who thinks for a moment, should we teach the Bible to our public school students during the school day? I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a quick yes from everybody, yes. you know, so right. Right. it's exciting. And it's amazing because, um, again, you have a, 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 anybody listening to this, um, and I'll have resources up. But the bottom line is go to the website. Like the, the best thing, and we'll, we'll cover this again in a minute because I want to make sure everybody has all the links that are necessary. But go to the website because um, what you all shared with me, the curriculum, everything, every ounce of this that we're talking about is done with excellence. Not okay. Not, hey, we're just going to do the it is done with excellence. There's video, even the videos that you all showed the day that I was there, excellence. Um, The curriculum, the graphics, every single thing that I saw is done with excellence. And you have to, because you have to, there's so many reasons. And and again, now we're kind of in a marketing conversation, but I mean, you have to capture the student's attention. There's all the reasons for that. If it was done like a, you know, low grade, cheap VBS, then, then it, it, you know, it may or may not be successful. And that's no disrespect to anyone. I'm just saying um, the students need, we are in a very competitive world with Snapchat and TikTok and Twitter and all the things that, that have grabbed their attention. Um, the graphics, the design, the curriculum, everything that they're going to see has to have excellence behind it or we will lose them. And clearly at a 70% clip in a lot of these neighborhoods that you have or school districts that you've already launched, you guys are doing something right. The the, the percentage alone is telling the story back, to, I would think, but to back to your team, hey, we're on the right path. Let's just keep going. Let's keep getting better. Let's keep striving for excellence. That's what I've seen. Is that is that fair to say as well? Well, that's what we're shooting for. And we're certainly learning as we go. I mean, right. it's kind of a joke around here. We talk about that. We don't know what we're doing, which is, uh, which is you know, it's tongue in cheek because we, in one sense, we've been preparing for this for over a decade, right? This sure. space, we know this space. But in another sense, it's, it's kind of, we're kind of pioneering something in a way. Right. Um, and so we're, we are all about, learning as we go. We're all about um, always improving, never settling. You know, we debrief every single meeting. So even the 101, well, that's what we call it, the 101 that you attended, Yeah, we debrief afterwards. You know, what went right? What went wrong? How can we improve? And so I say that to say even the process, I know that most people, they see the graphics, they see the curriculum, they see, see things. And of course we pursue excellence with that, but the process um, in terms of how do you go about starting this in your community? How do you go about getting that grassroots effort? How do you go about forming some leadership? How do you go about then communicating with the school? And really everywhere along the way, even the the order of things, we want to make sure we're pursuing excellence in, in all those ways. Again, not to take it back to an analogy of football, but the D-line, the offensive line, the receivers, the special teams, Um, we all see the game on Saturday. We don't see whatever Sunday or Monday through Friday before and the preparation that goes into it. That's, that's what I think you learned. So that's why I really wanted to take, take everyone through your story, because I think it started in high school with your ability to learn to, you know, to speak in front of groups in, in and there's no coincidence to me that, that Van Wert was the first to pilot this. And Oh, by the way, we had developed this, this teenager, (laughs) <laughs> in this opportunity. Like if anybody's listening to this and has missed the story, go back and start again, because it's incredible to me the way that this has all unfolded. And there's no coincidence that all these dots have come together for such a time as this and for what you're doing. So let me ask you, um, is this Ohio only? Because I don't know that the podcast, I don't know where this lands, but let's just say it lands outside of Ohio. Um, where is this across the country? Is this just Ohio based? Where are you all? And, and are, do you have other places that are doing this too? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, this is a nationwide effort. 
Um, certainly we've, we've started in Ohio, but this fall we're launching in one program out of state. We have active conversations going with uh, multiple states. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, in the long run, we want to see programs in all 50 states. I want to say, did, did I visit, was I in your headquarters? Is that the headquarters? Can I say that? Is that okay? Okay. So I just want to say that just, just for everybody listening that your headquarters is in Hilliard and it's my goal to make Hilliard famous. So I just want to say <laughs> that, that if you're impressed by this, which you should be it, in case you missed it, uh, you should, I just want to say that your office is in Hilliard because you know, Hilliard's awesome. So anyway, <laughs> outside of that, um, and again, I, it's my goal to make Hilliard famous. Um, the, what do I do? So I'm, I'm driving, running, listening, uh, rowing, <laughs> riding a bike, wherever I may hear this, what do I do if I'm interested, if I want to invest, if, and, and again, this isn't, this isn't a telethon, but, but, you know, let's just say if I want to invest, if I'm interested, if I want to learn more, if I want to meet you, if I want any, any question I might have, where do we go? Yeah. It's all about the website. Um, you can learn more. You can get some of your, if you're like, Hey, you know, is this sounds too good to be true? You can get, you can answer some of those. Is this real questions? Like you said, we have videos that we, uh, really tried to do a, a great job to, to express what it is. Um, but then you can also take the next step, uh, on the website. So there's a few things we build into the website. Obviously you can donate. And if anybody has any inclination to do that, you know, this certainly takes dollar bills to keep this thing going. So you right. take that. But if you're thinking about your community, uh, you can get started literally today on the website. So we've built a site that has every school district in the nation is loaded into our site, into our database. And the wow. very, we have a three phase launch plan. And the first phase is building community support. And in fact, what we call a community interest list, which is kind of like a petition of local people saying, yeah, we would love to see this in our community. That's step one. And so if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to call the principal or I'm going to, you know, go buy real estate. Like, no, no, right. no. Whoa, whoa. Step one right. is to build your community interest list again, like a petition. And it's already Built, I mean, it, the framework is there on the website. You can search, you can find your school, you can you can sign your list. Maybe you'll be the first name, maybe you'll be the 10th name or the 100th name, but you can sign the list. You can then send the link out to others. And the next step, or the if you really want to be involved in getting this and going, you can register as what we call a local champion to basically just say, hey, I'm going to champion this cause. I'm going to spread the word. And you can get access to some additional resources if you register as a champion. So sign your community interest list at lifewisecommunity.org. And if you want to go varsity, <laughs> <laughs> register right, right. as a champion. So what if I'm just interested in joining the team? Is there a contact? There, I'm sure there's a contact because you said, you know, there's, I'm sure someone has a lot of questions before they sign for anything. There's some place there. I'm sure that they can sign up and just say, I, I got questions. Can they oh, make yeah. a member of your team, whether it's Zoom or phone call or however that is too? Yeah, so there's uh, lots of resources that you can just get access to uh, on the website to answer a lot of those questions. But yeah, I mean, you can, there's a contact form. There's also a 30 minute um, webinar that is very much the content that Aaron, you uh, saw. I, I mean, right. it's very much, it's, that's basically the gist um, that somebody can watch. That's all available. And then, yeah, if you have additional questions, certainly you can reach out. Um, and then, again, becoming a champion would give you access to even additional information. Awesome. Well, man, we've covered a lot of ground, and I'm sure people are still trying, trying to process. I know when I drove away that day, I was still trying to process just the LifeWise piece. And I've known you, you know, a long time um, and all the other pieces that we talked about. So um, I, I, I'm sure people are still trying to process just what you covered and what is available right in our backyard. Um, and all it takes is a couple of questions and somebody with a passion and heart, much like yourself, to see it through. And you all have already kind of gone ahead and done the, pardon the French, blocking, <laughs> blocking and tackling uh, <laughs> to go back to an Ohio State. You've already done the blocking and tackling. Somebody just needs to take the football and run with it now. And um, I would even say that there's probably some avenues that are opened up for a running back that they can just run through now and hopefully 
take it all the way home. Um, this, th- this is amazing. And as soon as I met with you that day, I said, I've got to get Joel on because I want to get you on anyway, before I even knew about this, because I've just been a fan of, of all of your, um, you know, work so far. I don't know if that's the right word, but whatever. I've been a fan of you. Let's just say I've been a fan of yours uh, for a really long time and just watching you grow and, and um, in, in ministry and all the things that you've done. And now to take this on and sit down that day uh, and see what's happening now and where this is, could be for, it's just an awareness. I, I believe if we just create awareness, it is huge. The impact that we can have. Um, and again, I, and, and I want to uh, real quick, uh, athletes in action. Um, my daughter right now is serving at a young life camp and has been there for two weeks. So awesome organizations, right? Um, I, I said athletes in action. What's the other one? Uh, there's a third one. Athletes. Fellowship of Christian, right? All great, great, great organizations. This isn't to compete with those. Actually, this is, I would think, to actually enhance those potentially because of the limitations that they have. Yet on the other side, you have an opportunity within your school district to do something that will potentially introduce students that could then fill or then take part in all those other extracurricular activities that are awesome. So that's, and I want to make sure I want to say that because that was something that was impressive to me as well is because my kids have been involved in those three awesome organizations, and I'm sure there's others, but um, this is a chance that is during the school day, which is incredibly powerful. So did I say all that right, Joel? That you did, up? yeah. I mean, this is very because it, almost nobody knows about it, it's very much not comp- a comp- competitor of existing right. ministries. In fact, it, it complements them very well. Like you exactly. said, um, it is investing in students, particularly when they're young. Um, and then, yeah, we can partner closely with uh, obviously local churches, local ministries. Um, and it's really about building a healthy community. And right. what is more needed today than to teach the word of God to the rising generations of students. What is a more worthy cause right. today than, than investing, pouring that foundation into their lives? And it's already been approved. You don't have to fight your local school district. It's already been approved um, by, by the government, I should say. I, am, is right. that right? Did I, yeah. So, I mean, legally or whatever that is, it's already been approved. So anyway, I, I hope this lands where it needs to land. I hope it... Uh, uh, a lot of people will visit the website. And again, I'm just thankful for you, for your time, for your ministry, for your testimony um, and everything that you've you've taken a platform and run with it. And again, I, I think I said it earlier, I think a lot of us are given a platform and a lot of us maybe sometimes ignore that platform, not ignore, but maybe just don't, we're afraid. We're afraid to take it on and you have not let that fear stop you from just pushing forward. And, and uh, man, you're doing amazing things. I'm so... Um, Honored to call you friend and so glad you came on today. Well, Aaron, I, re- I really appreciate the encouragement. Um, uh, the, the Lord has blessed me immensely and um, and just create a lot of opportunities. And yeah, grateful for you. Grateful for this chance and love what you're doing. And uh, would yeah, grateful that, that you would take the time. 100%. This isn't the last time I have a feeling we're going to talk. We're probably going to talk a lot more. I already told you I want to just pick your brain on some things. So we'll do that offline. But um, man, I appreciate you. And uh, and so again, before we forget, lifewiseacademy.org, right? I don't think we ever gave the address, Joel. <laughs> Welcome to Unscripted. Lifewiseacademy.org, correct? That's right. You got it. All right. LifeWiseAcademy.org. That's your starting point. If you have watched this, listened to this, check out LifeWiseAcademy.org. Get started there. Um, and and uh, if you have any questions, obviously, you can always reach out to me. It'll also be in the post uh, when I put this up. But uh, thank you, Joel, man. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, sir. This has been the latest episode of the Unscripted Podcast with your host, Aaron Conrad from his studio at The Junction in Old Hilliard. Make sure to like, share, follow, and review on your favorite podcast platforms. Also, make sure to check out my song, Great and Mighty One, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you find your music. We'll be back with another great guest soon. We'll see you next time.